there are lots of people who do amazingly well on step two CK just using. Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anu Oyeturan and I am a medical graduate from St. George's University. You're watching Journey to MD. If this is your first time here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Today we're going to be talking about the Step 2 CK exam. So we all know that recently the Step 1 exam became pass and fail. Therefore, there's going to be a lot more emphasis placed on the Step 2 CK exam because program directors are going to want to find out how you are with test taking by using the Step 2 CK exam. So the step 2 CK exam is going to be weighted a lot more than it has been in the past. That's why I'm making this video. So I took my step 2 CK last year in August and there were just some studying tips that I wanted to share with you guys. They were helpful for me and I hope that they're helpful for you as well. Let's get right into it. The first thing I always say this is UWorld. I feel like UWorld is my best friend, was my best friend. <laughs> it probably needs to be my best friend again now that I'm planning on studying for step three. UWorld is such an essential tool when it comes to studying for any of the USMLE exams. I, you know, recommend UWorld for sure, but there are other um, question banks that you can use such as Ambus. If you had to choose just one, go for UWorld. UWorld, um, as I've mentioned before in so many other videos, is a testing and studying tool. And honestly, there are lots of people who do amazingly well on step two CK just use the new world it's possible guys it's that good of a resource so definitely get on that if you don't have a subscription it can be pricey but i mean what else isn't in this medical school journey that we are on it's just all an investment and just keep looking to that future when you are you know a full-fledged doctor in a residency hopefully so i have videos on my channel talking about how to use your world effectively that i will leave down below i will leave, probably leave them up somewhere as well so if you're interested in that go ahead and do that a lot of medical students do their step 2 ck exam at the end of third year that's usually the recommended time and that's because you've just finished doing your clinical rotations and your shelf exams so the information is still kind of fresh for some people you took step one maybe a year or so ago so like that information is still somewhere hidden in your brain it needs to be jugged but it's there somewhere so that's how most people do it but I also understand that for a lot of IMGs, that's not necessarily an option. So just stay tuned, guys. I will give tips for both sets of people. So for my people who are taking Step 2 CK around the end of third year, beginning of fourth year, I would say that you should do a good job with studying for your shelf exams. So if you're just starting um, clinical rotations, you know, we have the six core rotations that we have to do, pediatrics, family medicine, internal medicine, surgery, OB, and psychiatry. For all of those cores that we have to do, we have to do a shelf exam, which is basically an NBME exam at the end of a rotation, just to see if you actually learned something during the rotation. Um, so do a good job studying with those. Honestly, start from day one. I have a lot of videos on my channel talking about each individual core rotation and how to go about studying for it. So, you know, I will leave a playlist below that you guys can go ahead and check out if you're interested in that. But if you've done a good job studying for all your shelf exams up until this point, then Step 2 CK is going to be a breeze, honestly, because a lot of the information um, that is on Step 2 CK are basically from the shelf exams. You have a good base to go into dedicated. You don't even need a long dedicated studying period. Two weeks, maybe a month, sometimes is good enough. When I say shelf exams, I mean especially with a lot of emphasis on internal medicine and family medicine, I, I guess, because a lot of um, Step 2 CK questions come from those specialties. I would also say surgery and OB as well, but very, very heavy on internal medicine. If you're starting out in third year and you're just watching this video in preparation of what is to come, make sure, make sure, make sure you do well on those shelf exams, especially I am. For those people who are at the point where they're studying for step two CK and you have not done all of these things, you haven't done well in your shelf exams or you just have, you're a medical graduate and so you're a little bit removed from clinicals and all of those things, I would say your world is still a great resource to start. You may not have as strong of a back ground just because it's been some time. I recommend that if you are doing dedicated, you do about 120 to 160 questions a day. So that's about three to four hours a day. Review those questions. And if you are doing rotations as well, or if you're working at the same time, I would recommend maybe 80 questions a day. And you know, if you do a good job 
reviewing those questions and you go day by day, day by day, honestly, you get better prepared and better equipped for the Step 2 CK exam. UWorld helps you focus basically on the high yield topics, especially biostatistics, which leads me to my second point. Guys, do not ignore biostatistics. Biostats is important. It's high yield. Um, on my exam, I had about two to three biostatistics questions every block. So that means that that's about 16 to 24 questions for in total for the entire exam, which is a lot of questions to get wrong, you know, um, especially if you're trying to get a good mark, you know, to, to help with residency applications. And especially if you're an IMG, like you have to take it seriously. I learned biostatistics basically from UWorld and from Divine Interventions podcast. Um, I started early. I actually did biostats a month before the actual exam, but I was doing at least 30 minutes, one hour of biostatistics every day. I also forget biostats really quickly, so it's very important to review those concepts. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend the UWorld biostats question bank. I did not use it, so I, I, I could not say anything about it, but um, I know that the UWorld question bank itself was sufficient for me to do well on the biostats part of the exam. The one thing about biostatistics that is different on step two CK than step one is they start giving more article questions and um, drug ads. So basically three questions are linked together or related to either a drug ad or an article. You have to, have to answer those questions. Sometimes it's linked enough that you, know, you have to answer one to be able to answer the other, but most times it's not. And when you're in a situation like that where it's three questions linked together to a drug ad or to an article, usually you only have 30 eight questions in that block so you have a little bit more time to dedicate to those questions. I think I have to do a whole video on answering those questions because those questions can sometimes be very frustrating. I also forgot to mention that the step one first aid book is actually still very useful for biostatistics. Speaking of the step one first aid book that actually brings me to point number three which is that I still use the step one first aid book for studying for step two CK. I feel like the first aid book for step one is such a valuable resource because it talks about the pathology, pathophysiology, like the physiology behind diseases or even just certain concepts that you have to know. And unfortunately, step two CK um, first aid book does not have that much depth. So I still found myself so many times referring back to first aid step one. If I needed to remember a concept really quickly, then I would find myself flipping back to first aid step one. It was so helpful for pharmacology. With pharmacology, honestly, it shouldn't be that bad now that we have gone through rotations and we've actually seen this medications being prescribed. And, you know, sometimes we followed up with patients who are on certain medications and we've seen the side effects. So that helps with retention. But even still, sometimes you need your reminders. And step one first aid book is such a good pharmacology resource tool with the side effects, like mechanism of actions and all of those things. So don't sleep on step one first aid. If you're studying for step one right now, everything you are notating in your first aid book, make sure you keep that for step two because it's very helpful. Speaking of first aid, I did use the first aid step two CK book and I used it because I needed, as you guys probably know by now, if, you watch, if you've watched my other videos, I am very analog in that way. I need something to write on sometimes. So first aid step two was my way of doing that. My first aid step one was mostly on my iPad, so I didn't really connect with it in the right sense. But with my first aid step two, I was able to annotate it and all of those things. I didn't read it from cover to cover. I really did not feel the need to. I felt like with UWorld and first aid step one, I had a lot of things covered. But, you know, there were some times that I would skim through it and just, you know, just to review, honestly. Um, I don't know if I would say it's worth getting first aid step two CK book, but if that's something you need, go ahead and do it. One thing I know for sure is you don't need any specialty books. You don't need step up to medicine. It's too detailed for the step two CK exam. You don't need, I don't know what other books people need. Um, I know online med ed can be helpful. I didn't use it for my studying for step two CK, but I did use it for some of my shelf um, exam studying. So it was helpful in that way but I don't think you need any in-depth specialty based books. It's not necessary. It's too in-depth for step two CK. So just focus on new world, you know, um, first aid, step one and biostatistics and you should be good for the most part. The last thing I want to say is practice tests are important for any of the USMLE exams, but also specifically for step two CK. There's a lot of um, resources out there for practice. There are two UWorld self-assessments and they're 
are I think about five NBME self-assessments. Personally, I found the UWorld self-assessments to be more predictive of my score, but <laughs> I feel like the NBMEs were literally just to break my spirit and make me want to study harder because I found them to be harder than what the exam was, honestly. I scored about 10 points higher on my actual exam than I did for my NBME self-assessments. Practice tests are a must. You must do practice tests. Do one at the beginning of your dedicated period so you know what you are, like what level you are going into studying. And then do one at the end closer to the exam, maybe about two weeks or a week before the exam. That will let you know where you're at. And if you're not where you want to be, then it's important to push the exam if you can. One thing that I found was helpful for me is simulating exam conditions before I actually got into the exam hall. I studied for step 2CK mostly at the hospital that I was rotating at during that time. So I was I had access to the library and the library had computers kind of like what you see at the Prometric Center. So personally, I have a problem with light. When there's a lot of light coming into my eyes, my eyes start doing weird things and that affects my brain. So I put myself into exam conditions two weeks before the exam and I was doing eight blocks of view world every other day. So Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, and then the next Monday and the next Wednesday, my exam was on a Saturday, so I, I didn't do anything on Friday. Um, so I put myself into those conditions. I literally would go in at 8 a.m. because my exam started at, was it 8 or 9? My exam started either at 8 or 9 a.m. So I would do the exact same thing for those five days. I would go in, you know, take my breaks when I plan to take my breaks during the exam, just so my brain was in exam mode. Guys, I figured out that for the Step 2 CK exam, you actually have the option to make the screen dark. I did not know this before. When I found that out, I was so grateful because my eyes got to break. So that's a tip out there for you guys if you are sensitive to light like me and you need that. Go ahead and make it dark mode for your actual exam. Put yourself into exam conditions. So on the days that I was not doing my eight blocks of your world, I was reviewing what I had done the previous day. And honestly, I found that to be very helpful. So when Saturday, the day of my exam came around, I basically felt like, oh, this is just another day of practice. And I wasn't anxious or anything. So for my people with exam anxiety out there that's a good tip for you to know anyways that's it for today's video guys i hope it was helpful if it was please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed go ahead and subscribe if you have any questions please go ahead and leave a comment below send me a dm or send me an email and i'll be very happy to respond back to you that's it guys see you next week bye